Then we come to the second rule or the uh, dot convention 2 and this is related to the um, uh, contribution to the core in the flex from the currents in each of the different windings. Okay? So the rule uh, states that the currents into the dot or currents entering the dot in various windings produce flex that add to each other in the core. So if, if all the um, windings have currents entering the dot then their flexes add in the core or in any part of the core. Okay? So using that, um, so if this is the um, dot configuration for uh, for a given transformer and if I1 the current in the winding 1 is entering the dot and if I2 the current in the secondary winding is also entering the dot then the um, flex, the individual flex due to each of these currents add in the core to result in phi c which is the core flex equal to phi 1 plus phi 2 the two individual flexes. The flex themselves the magnitude is given by the flex is uh, mmf divided by the reluctance of the core. mmf for the first winding is uh, number of turns times the uh, primary current will be n1 i1 and the reluctance is the same for both the both the windings for all the windings. Okay. Phi 2 will be its own um, uh, secondary uh, MMF which is N2 times I2 over the same reluctance. Okay. Uh, the key point is the these two flexes add in any part of the core okay, as long as the two currents are entering the dot. Okay. Now a different case would be uh, this dot configuration. Uh, on the primary side I have current entering the dot and on the secondary side I have current actually leaving the dot here okay? uh, or the current is entering the undotted end therefore it is leaving the dotted end. Okay? So in this case the um, the phi 1 and phi 2 individually are still given by the, the same equation okay? mmf over the reluctance uh, whereas if you look at any part of the core uh, any leg of the core then the um, the net flex due to these two flex components is the difference between the two phi c is phi 1 minus phi 2. Uh, a related uh, discussion is um, again for this configuration this dot configuration um, I have i1 entering the dot in the primary winding whereas on the secondary side I have i2 actually leaving the dot as shown here. Okay. So this will be the case in most of the power transformers that you study for example in forward converter, uh, full bridge converter and so on. Okay. So here this will be more like the load current. So we know that when we looked at the basic principles of transformers um, when there is a load current that leaves the dot here then there will be a corresponding uh, load current component drawn on the primary side which will enter the dot okay. and um, um, the contribution, the the flex contribution due to these two currents will cancel each other leaving only the flex due to the magnetizing current present in the in the core. Okay. Um, so once again in this case phi c is phi 1 minus phi 2 because in one winding the current is entering the dot and in the other winding the current is leaving the dot. Okay so let's uh, use the principle that we just learnt to solve this uh, example problem. Okay. So given this uh, transformer core structure and the two coils with their um, um, given winding directions and also given that the dot for the primary winding has been placed at the top the question is where should be the dot for the secondary winding okay. so I would uh, like to urge you to pause at this point and uh, try to solve this example yourself okay so if you are to solve this problem then um, one uh, method would be to uh, try to assign a current entering the dot here call that as I1 and find out the corresponding flex due to this current entering the dot. Okay. So you can use the right hand rule and you can uh, see that um, the flex here is really going up. Okay. The fingers will be curling um, along the current direction that will be from uh, um, uh, let's see this is from left to right right so the current is here like this the current is here like this and therefore the thumb will be pointing upwards okay so this flex um, um, forms a continuous path like this and in this um, in this part of the core it flows down and then completes a path like this okay? so that's the flex direction it is clockwise around the core okay? now let's see um, what is the 
uh, flex direction due to a current in the secondary winding. So let's um, arbitrarily try a current entering the winding at the top. Okay. So uh, where will be what will be the flex direction due to this current I2? So once again, if you use the right hand rule, so here the current direction is right to left, here right to left, right to left, and so on. So if you um, curl the fingers in the direction of the of the current, you'll see that the uh, the thumb is really pointing downwards here. Okay, so that will be the flex direction phi two, whereas this flex is really phi one due to the current in the primary winding. Okay, so clearly we can see that in this part of the core, and actually you can see any part of the core, the current direct the flex directions for phi two would be like this here, um, like this here, and this direction at the top end. Okay. So you can see that everywhere along the core the two flexes are adding okay. which means if the current is entering the dot here the current should have been entering the dot in the secondary winding as well and that is why the flexes are adding. Okay. Therefore I would uh, place the dot uh, at the top for the secondary winding as well. So that is the answer. So to summarize we learned uh, two rules. The first rule is that the um, voltage polarity of the dotted end with respect to the undotted end is the same in all the windings. And the second one is if uh, current enters a dot in any winding, the corresponding flex due to these currents add um, to each other in, the, in any part of the core. Okay. Um, I also wanted to talk about two additional points. The first one is that when you have transformers with uh, multiple core legs with uh, multiple windings then um, um, it's not enough to have just one dot for each winding we need one dot for each pair of winding let's say if you have um, um, say just three three windings then for the first two you have one dot um, pair for the second and third you have another one and there's one for the one and three and so on okay. Uh, this kind of uh, more complex situations arise in um, um, in this integrated magnetics based uh, power converters. Okay. Um, the second point is that if we have a, a wound transformer where it is not possible to determine the winding directions of uh, every single coil, it is still easy to determine the dot polarity. All you have to do is um, apply a small AC voltage to any one of the windings and um, look at the waveforms of the voltages um, in in all the other windings with respect to the to the applied voltage and just by looking at the phase relationship we can easily determine the uh, dot polarity uh, using the the rules that we just learned in this video